Welcome to this video on polynomial vocabulary. We'll be covering a lot of the words that we'll be using throughout the entire course. And so let's get started. Our first word is polynomial. A polynomial is a finite sum or difference of terms. How you'll often see it is there will be a parenthesis with something going on inside of it and then it's joined maybe with another parenthesis with something going on inside of it. This would be a polynomial expression. So it's a finite sum or difference of terms. Standard form. When we refer to standard form, that means we're going to arrange the terms of a polynomial in decreasing powers of the exponent. So the largest exponent would go in the first place, the next largest exponent would go into the next place. The next term is degree. The degree is the highest power of the exponent. What is the biggest exponent is really what it's asking. That will be the, always the one that's put into the first position when you write your expression in standard form. Our next term is terms. Terms is a constant variable or product of a constant and variable. Terms are always separated by an addition or subtraction sign. A constant. A constant is a number with no variables. So if we had 2x, that is not a constant. We're going to cross that out. A constant would just be 2 or 1.4 or 67. It's just a number with no variables. And our last term that we're going to talk about right now, coefficient. A coefficient is a number that is placed before a variable. A leading coefficient is the first number next to a variable when the polynomial is in standard form. So I had used my example 2x above. 2 is the coefficient. If I had an entire expression, such as that, I have a coefficient here and here. I have a 2 as a coefficient, I have 3 as a coefficient, but the leading coefficient is the number when it's in standard form, that's the first number, so 2 would be my leading coefficient. All right, another way, we're more. this is more vocabulary, we're going to be classifying our polynomials and what they look like. A degree, as you recall, is the highest exponent. So let's make a quick note here for ourselves. It's our highest exponent. If you don't have a highest exponent, that means it's a zero. That means there's no variable. If there is no variable, we call that expression a constant. It's not ever going to change because there's no variable. If there is an exponent of 1, so if we just say have that same 2x, there's an understood 1 right there. If the highest exponent is 1, we're talking linear. Linear means whatever that is, it's when we graphed it, it's going to be a line. We can have a positive line, we can have a negative line. If our highest exponent is 2, so instead say we had 2x squared, that means if we were to graph that, it would be a quadratic. We will be talking about those later. Quadratic. A quadratic is a parabola. It's a U-shaped graph that can open up or it can open down. If our highest exponent is 3, 2x cubed, we call that cubic. A cubic we won't be dealing with in Algebra 1, but if we were to graph it, it would kind of have that kind of shape. It could start high and go low. Our last one, quartic. If the highest exponent is a 4, we call this quartic. Okay. Be very careful between the quadratic and the quartic. Sometimes people get it mixed up. One more that we see often that I don't have on here, 2x, if your highest exponent is 5, a lot of times we'll see that and we just call that guy quintic. 
quint means five. Okay, so that's based, this is naming our polynomial based on the highest exponent. We can also name our polynomial based on the number of terms in it. Now remember terms we talked about up here. Terms are always separated by addition or subtraction, okay? If there's one term, meaning there's no addition or subtraction, one term is a monomial. If there's two terms, so you have something plus or minus something else, two, the prefix for two is by, so this is going to be a binomial. If you have three terms, so we have a term plus or minus another term plus or minus a third term, you have three things going on. The prefix for three is tri, so that's going to be a trinomial. We could go on and on and on naming our polynomials by the numbers of terms, but for the purposes of Algebra 1, we're going to say anything that is four or more, we're just going to generally call it a polynomial. Okay? So let's try a couple of these and see. We're going to put all of our vocabulary together here. So standard form. Remember our standard form back up here says we're going to arrange the terms of a polynomial in decreasing powers of the exponent. Biggest exponent to smallest exponent. So when I look at my exponents, I see four is the biggest. That means this term needs to go first. I need to include the sign that goes with it. So we're going to say negative eight m to the fourth. So what's the next biggest term? So I look at what's left over. This is my next biggest term. There is not a sign in front of it, so that means it's positive. And then this has an exponent of one. That's our smallest exponent. We'll bring him up to the end. Now we're in standard form. Largest exponent to smallest exponent. So what is our degree? Degree is the highest exponent. So when I look at the degree, it's a four. And I said if it's a four, we're going to call that quartic. Our number of terms, remember terms are separated by addition or subtraction, so I have one, there's an addition, there's two, there's another addition, three, three terms. So I looked over here, three terms, we call that a trinomial. The leading coefficient, the leading coefficient, remember, is the number at the very front when the polynomial is in standard form. We know we put our polynomial in standard form, and so the number up front is negative eight. So my leading coefficient is negative eight. Then my last question, what is the coefficient of m? So I have m to the fourth, m cubed, and just m. It doesn't say m to the fourth or m cubed. It just says m, so a coefficient is the number in front of the m, which in this case, is nine. Okay, let's try this one again. We'll try this guy over here. We're going to put them into standard form. Look at the exponents. I'm going to remind myself that's a one right there. So my largest exponent right here. Three's the biggest, so that has to go first. Negative x cubed. The next biggest exponent is two. I'm going to take the whole thing, so minus 3x squared. The next biggest exponent is 1. There's no sign in front of it, so it's really a plus. Okay, and then I have a constant. It has no variable, so I'm going to say plus 11. Now it's in standard form. 3, 2, 1, none. The degree, remember the degree is the highest exponent. The highest exponent is 3. So when our highest exponent is three, we call it cubic. The number of terms, remember they're separated by addition or subtraction. So I have one, two, 
3, 4. So I have my addition and subtraction going on here. So I got one, two, three, four charms. What do we call it when it's four charms, four or more? We call it a polynomial. Our leading coefficient, it's the number up front when in standard form. Here's our standard form, the number up front is negative one. And the coefficient of x squared, that means find x squared. What's the number in front of it? Negative three. All right, the last two examples of that. Standard form, largest exponent to smallest exponent. We have two, we have one. It is already in standard form, so I'm just gonna recopy it. Nine y squared plus seven y plus 16. The degree, that's your highest exponent, which is a two. That makes it quadratic. The number of terms, I have one term, two terms, three terms. A three term is called a trinomial. <clears throat> the leading coefficient is the number in front when in standard form, so that makes that nine. And which term is the constant? If you remember, a constant is a number with no variable. When I look at this, the 16 is the only thing without a variable, so 16 is my constant. Our last one, standard form. There's only one term, it's in standard form. The degree, remember the degree is the highest exponent on a variable. There is no variable so it does not have a degree. Number of terms, there's no addition or subtraction, so that's one term, we call that a monomial. And then the leading coefficient, the leading coefficient is the number in front of the variable, because that's what a coefficient is, no variables, there is no leading co coefficient because it's a constant. Factors. Factors are numbers multiplied together to make another number. So when I look at my first example, I want to know how many factors there are. This is numbers multiplied together to make another number. So I know you're thinking, oh, well, I would distribute the five. You're right, but I'm wanting to know about factors. So the five is being multiplied to this entire parenthesis. So this is being multiplied to that. That's two factors. This is the first factor. That is the second factor. So there's two factors. There's five and there's x minus four. Those are my two factors. My next example, I have what? And our final one. Notice in this, there are no addition and subtractions. That means this is all one single term but there are three factors because a factor is a number multiplied together to make another number. So this says three times X times Y. So we have three factors. They are three X and Y. Real quick review on order of operations. Order of operations is when you simplify expressions using a specific order. And a lot of times we use the mnemonic PEMDAS. The first, the P stands for parentheses or any other grouping symbol. A parenthesis is a grouping symbol. Anything inside the parenthesis needs to be simplified, meaning there's nothing else that you can do to it. The E stands for apply exponents. So once all the parentheses are applied, you go through and look for exponents to see if you can uh, if you have to apply any of those. Next comes multiply or divide. You need to multiply them in or divide them in order going from left to right. And the last one is add or subtract in order from left to right. So we're going to try a few of these. This question was a hot debate, hotly debated topic on the internet for a while. If we follow order of operations, there kept being two major answers, one or nine. 
So if we follow just straight what it says, there are no parentheses, there are no um, exponents, so then we'll multiply or divide in order. So that'd be 6 divided by 2, which is 3 times 3 equals 9. Okay? Can you think of what you can do to make it clearer to be able to get a 1? So the only way to get a 1 through division is if this was a 6. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. So what if we wrote this as 6 divided by a grouping symbol, 2 times 3. Then we, we go back to our order of operations, 2 times 3 is 6 because we're simplifying, and then we'll get 1. Okay, let's try this one. That's addition. We deal with this part last. We have a parenthesis, but it's already simplified inside. There's no uh, exponents. We have some multiplication and we have some division, but remember you need to go in order left to right. So we have 7 plus 54 divided by 3 times 2. So the first thing that we got to was this right here, the 54 divided by 3. So we have 7 plus 54 divided by 3 is 18 times 2. We get 7 plus 36, which equals 43. You can check that on your calculator. You'll get the same thing. Let's take a look at this guy. We have an exponent. There's no parentheses. 2 cubed, so that's 17 minus 8 divided by 4 plus 6. We go across, we have a division here, negative 8 divided by 4 becomes negative 2, 17 minus 2 plus 6. Now we'll go in order, 17 minus 2 is 15 plus 6 is 21. And our last one. We have 24 minus 4 squared times 3 plus 15. So we have a squaring that's going on. So we've got 24 minus 16 times 3 plus 15. We have this right here. Uh, so we've got 24 minus 48, because negative 16 times 3 is 48, plus 15. And now 24 minus 48 is negative 24 plus 15. So our final answer is negative 9. Make sure you have your notes fully filled out, and I'll see you tomorrow.